Welcome YouTubers, so this is the next video along and to do with the BMS. Now this is around the switching of the AC power. Now that's used to switch on and off the grid time inverter. The reason we're turning that on and off is if the battery voltage gets down to 60 volts, we need to be able to turn off the grid time inverter, but also if there's any errors uh, later down the track, um, it'll be handy to be able to switch the grid time inverter off if, for example, a cell gets too high or gets too low and a bunch of other criteria that we can also add into code later on. But main, the main fundamental reason to, um, to do this is to be able to turn the grid time inverter on and off and mainly to turn it off if the battery gets too low. So let's have a look at what I've been looking at and, um, and how I'm doing the switching. So these are the relays that I first started off thinking that I was going to use. I very first thought I would use this solid state relay here, this is the 40 amp version um, and it's got an aluminium heat sink that's attached to it. Now I thought about using this because it, it doesn't require much um, to turn on and off and it's nice and easy to be able to switch the uh, main 240 volts. The problem with using this, as I later found while testing it with 2300 watts, which is about 8.5 amps, 9 amps, the problem with this is that it gets really hot. Uh, so that's one issue. The second issue is that the contacts are exposed. So the 240 volts coming in on this end is technically exposed, which means that I'm going to have to put it inside a box to keep it safe, um, away from touching fingers. The problem with doing putting it in a box is that I need to cool it, which means I will have to put a fan on it. And the, the third reason, um, maybe not to use this, is it, it, um, it gets, because it gets quite hot, it's obviously wasting quite a lot of power. Uh, I don't know exactly how much it was wasting, I didn't um, figure it out, but for this to get quite hot, obviously quite a few watts um, of power is being used um, or being wasted in the form of heat. So I thought, well, given that I've got all these, these issues to overcome with this unit, um, it's got one advantage, obviously it's easy to switch um, using pretty much anything, 3 volts to 32 volts there DC. But it's got some real big drawbacks, which is the heat that it, that it produces, but also um, it's not easy to um, put somewhere that it's going to look good on the power wall. So using this for the power wall to switch the AC, not the best idea. The second thing I thought about using was a relay. Now this is a, a board of four relays, but I was only needing to use one. The, the, this is a 5 volt relay, 5 volts on one end, 240 volts on the other side um, for the switching. Now the problem with using uh, this relay here, I did some more tests with this, connected it up to 2300 watt heater, and the relay got extremely hot. The relay um, got to about 56 degrees, and at that stage I turned it off. So it was gonna be way, way too hot, um, especially to put in a box, and it just wasn't gonna be able to do what I needed it to do. So I thought, okay, well clearly one relay is too small, and what was the context within these relays must be too small. What I need to do is put it across two relays, so maybe put two rela relays in parallel. The problem with then doing that is that the the load on the 5 volt rail was going to be quite high, and it, having any load on a 5 volt rail interferes with the current sensors and, and the rest the voltages on the 5 volts. And because everything's very um, dependent on the 5 volts being solid, this creates a problem with using relays, but also creates a problem with using multiple relays. But I did think about using one relay and then having it um, and having it connected to two and then I could possibly use these three relays for the 240 volts and then just switch this one so this one switched these ones here um, and just parallel the, the 240 volts so that 240 volts was split between two or three relays. That would potentially solve the problem um, on the 240 volt side however it created a new problem with how do you drive the relays. The next thing I thought about using was one of these to switch the, um, you know, th three or four of these relays. The problem with this SSR is that it's an AC SSR, so this won't switch DC current, or it won't turn it on and off. So this was pretty much pointless um, for this project anyway. I did order one of these um, as a single, but I've also got a single one of these, and I kind of got to the point that. Uh, turning the AC relay on and off, or turning AC current on and off was beginning to be a bit of a problem. And to do it efficiently, that I was just wasn't wasting power and heat if I was to use this. So the next thing I found um, was one of these. 
This is a 12 volt relay. It's got, it's a dual pole relay. So you switch it with 12 volts on one side and it switches these contacts. So there's one contact there, one set of contacts there and another set of contacts on the other side of it. The advantage of using this is that it's pretty much the same as using two of these relays. So by switching it with 12 volts on one side, both poles could be um, connected here, in which case the, the current that the 240 volts is passing will pass through both of the, um, the connections here. So this is, by using this relay, it allows me to be able to um, split the load between these poles, in which case this relay is not going to overheat, and it's a much more buttier and bigger relay. However, it creates a problem with how do you switch 12 volts um, when you've only got a 5 volt uh, Arduino to turn it on and off. So what I've done, um, and that's a bit of kind of rambling about what I've had to do to try and problem solve exactly how I'm going to do it. This is, the, this is very similar to the relay I've actually used. Uh, I've connected a single one of these relays, the 5 volt relays, to switch the 12 volts put a 12 volt input on for the relay and then connected four of these cable or these plugs into the 240 volts so that I can switch 240 volts again uh, across the, the, the two poles in which case um, it's it doesn't produce half as much heat it, it's very um, it, it runs nice and cool or pretty much cool and it does the exact purpose I need without wasting power and heat if I was to use an SSR. The only advantage of using a solid state relay is being able to switch on and off very, very rapidly or very quickly. So that's where the SSRs really come in. But with the, uh, with the switch being on or off for long periods of time, the, a normal relay is far better and works out far more efficient. So let's have a look what I've done. So this is how it's looking once everything's put into the box. So I've used the same container as I've used for the current sensors, which means that it'll look all quite similar. I've got a nine pin plug on this side here. So that plugs into my BMS. That'll run down and plug directly into the five volt relay here. The other um, thing I've got is I've got a 12 volt power adapter that connects directly into this um, plug so I can unplug that. On the other side I've got the 240 volt plug here which goes around and plugs into the bottom here and then it comes up and then goes to a very similar connection to a computer plug and so that plugs into the bottom of the inverter. So what happens is that this uh, will be switched by the BMS which will turn this relay on and off. When this is turned on the 12 volts will then be switched on and turn the relay, the 12 volt relay on. I've, um, if I zoom in a bit closer over here, you'll see what I've, oh, probably this position might be better. You'll see what I've done is I've kept these wires here intact. So the only one I've changed is the live wire. That's connected directly into this um, power block here, which then goes through and then connects to one of these. And then there's two cables for each one of these. There's two cables that come out, one to the top of the relay and one to the bottom of the relay. And then the other switch side is on here and that goes through to the second power block which then connects to the cable. So I've only had to cut one of these um, cables out of the three and I've just put a power block, one here, one there, which keeps it nice and neat and nice and simple. So when playing with 240 volts, you want to keep things as safe and as simple as possible so that there's less chance of anything going wrong. So yeah, single cable comes through to here, it goes to a double cable to connect to both of the poles on the relay. The other, the switch side of the relay then connects through two cables back through to this power block here and then obviously out through to the cable. So that's looking, and I've all glued it in here and it's nice and tight and looking very tidy. I've also connected a couple of three different LEDs so that I can see the states of what's happening in here but it's going to be best shown when the, the box is back, on to, is back together and I'll show you on the garage floor when I've got things plugged back in. So I'll just go into the garage. Right, so this is how it looks like on the floor. What I've done is I've just pl plugged in the 12 volts and I've also got the top part of those LEDs so now you can see what it's doing. So 12 volts is turned on and plugged in. The 5 volts, this isn't plugged in. Oops, there we go. This isn't plugged into anything just yet but as soon as I plug this in and the code says that the 
relay should should be on, then it will put 12 volts and uh, 5 volts in here. 5 volt relay will switch. In which case, if the 5 volt relay switches, so does the 12 volt relay. So this gives me a nice bit of indication about what's plugged in, what's turned on, and what this box is doing. Okay, so now if I plug in the BMS into the switch, and the good thing about this is that we can just use normal 9 pin extenders, which makes it nice and easy, so I'll just plug that directly in. And you should see the 5 volts turn on, because that's what it's meant to do. And all three LEDs turn on. If I turn the 5 volts, oh sorry, if I turn the 12 volts off, obviously those two LEDs go out. So normally that's how it will look. If the battery is fully charged, 5 volts will be going in and the relay will turn on. If for whatever reason, the, or when the battery gets low, or it needs to turn off the grid time inverter, then it turns off, and obviously that's instant. And you hear the clicking of the relay. Well, it's both relays. So the next step is to um, put this on the wall, and have a look on how it looks. So it's looking fantastic on the wall. If I come down here, you'll see it. So it's plugged directly into the bottom of the inverter there, the power cable that comes along. It's a nice big loop, so it's not going to be no resistance in that. Straight through to the 24 hour timer that's set for 9 pm on and for 8 am off. That's where I've plugged in the 12 volt adapter. It's just got that plug at the bottom. And then the 5 volt feed to the box goes up to here and just plugs into the back oops, just plugs into the back of the BMS into the second plug of and I've just turned the solar back on and everything's good to go so this part of the BMS is all up and going and functional so I'll do some testing tonight and everything should be good with any luck so that should stay on pretty much and not turn off and yeah thanks everyone for watching once again like the video if you haven't liked it subscribe if you get to subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video